Okay, geographers, I'm gonna get into the public land survey system, or PLSS. I'm gonna explain how this works, the general idea behind it, and then show you how to actually, you know, make, make sense of this stuff, figure out specific locations, specific townships. All right, so let's, uh, let's get moving here. To start with, we have a survey line that way and that way. And so it's north is at the top and therefore east over here, south and west going that way. You dig? All right, so this line here we call the baseline. All right, and then this one going that way, we call the principal meridian. And note, we've used meridian before when talking about uh, lines of longitude, right? It's, it's uh, similar, but not the same. Just keep that in mind that we're not dealing with latitude and longitude now. We're dealing with township and range. We're dealing with the public land survey system yet you're going to see some of these names overlap terms overlap things like that in everything we do the the best you can do is just you know figure it out to learn it memorize it uh, there's no real trick here all right so what happened uh, years ago is we had surveyors go out and they would typically they'd find some high spot some you know mountain where they could look out and survey these lines for miles all right, these initial starting lines. And then off of these lines, they made a grid, all right? In fact, let me switch colors here. So they just went in every direction and made six mile by six mile grids, all right? Let me Go this way, just so we have everything in there, okay? So it went as far as they possibly could. So each of these squares here would be six miles by six miles or 36 square miles, all right? That's the, the idea. They, in theory, they're perfectly uh, square and perfect. That's what Thomas Jefferson was all about this rational mathematical logic. In reality, it actually looks more like my sloppy drawings because of mountain ranges and, and even terrain or issues. I mean, this was happening years and years ago, so it wasn't exactly state-of-the-art survey equipment, whole host of reasons. So they're, they're supposed to be perfect. Honestly, in, in some parts of uh, California, you run into plenty of things that look more like that, this, this sloppy stuff. That's that's why I drew it that way, not because I shake horribly like an old man. All right, okay, so we've got these squares in here, and we call each of these a township, all right? So each square represents a township here. Uh, and we, and another key thing here with land division, what we're dealing with, is we're interested in the squares themselves. When we were doing latitude and longitude, we were interested in the intersections. We were looking for points. Now we're interested in area. So keep that in mind, all right? We're, we're interested in the squares, not where these lines intersect, all right? So let's start with, I don't know, let's do this one right here. I'll even color it in to show that we want it, uh, that, we're, that we're interested in, I should say, the, the area itself, okay? So this township has a specific location or address. And what we're going to get here, in fact, let me just move this. I'm going to change colors again, try to make this visually meaningful. Um, so this right here, we need to get a T value and an R value, all right, for township and range. All right, so with township and range here, what we're going to do first is we're going to look at the baseline, and we're going to count squares either north or south of that baseline, all right? So we're south 
of the baseline, and we are one, two, three, four squares to the south. So it's T4S for Township 4 South. All right, so we got that one. Now we need our range value, and we use the principal meridian, so we locate that line, and now we're simply counting squares east or west of that principal meridian. So we're to the west, one, two, three. So it would be R3, whoops, dummy, R3W for range three west. All right, so the exact location here, we need both of these things, right? Because honestly, this whole row right there is for south, right? So if I just said township for south, it could be anything along here for miles and miles. Same thing with three west. This whole row, or column rather, is all R3W here, yeah, right? But these two put together, it can only be this specific township. You dig? Does that make sense? And so like, I don't know, let's do uh, this one right up there. That would be, in fact, yeah, feel free. Pause this video, think about it. You know, what is it? But all you're going to do is you're going to find that baseline first. Hopefully you paused and you try this and you, you got it. But you find that baseline and you go one, two, three. So it would be T3N this time. And then we're going to find the baseline and count, or I mean, sorry, the principal meridian and count over. All right, so one, oops, one, two over there. So it would be R2 east all right so township three north range two east is this guy right there hopefully that makes sense work through this and as i have most likely shown you in class by the time you're you're watching this i do have on canvas uh, a study guide kind of thing we've got a much neater version of that and i have these initial um uh, you know, little townships, A, B, they've got the letters in there. You're trying to figure out, okay, what is it, right? What is A? What is uh, B? What are those those letters there? You're counting the, the squares from the baseline and from the principal meridian. That's how you solve it. All right, but that's just, that's just a little bit here. There's more to it, of course, because 36 square miles, that's gigantic. That's a huge amount of um, space here and and this you got to think back this is all thomas jefferson so that's why it's all rational right uh but uh it's also here's the thing don't tell anybody we don't like to talk about this but but jefferson was he was kind of a communist like, like even before we had communists and he was a hypocritical uh, communist uh he was a monster i mean there's a whole you know slavery whole deal monster um, but his romantic vision of the United States was not just to spread from sea to shining sea and come up with this rational way to divide up this newly acquired land and, you know, all that kind of stuff. He wanted a nation of independent family farms. That was his goal. He figured if everyone had just enough land to, to farm, to raise what they needed, to just live and they weren't bossed around by any kind of government, we would have a perfect society. All right, that's the, that's the goal. That's what he envisioned. So to, you know, to give away or sell 36 square miles, that's, that's plantation style of farming. That's massive. That's not for some independent farm, right? For just some little, you know, family who's living independently. So we take every township in here and we further divide it into what we call sections. So every single one of these uh, uh, townships is divided. Right, let me draw one, let me move this here for you. We have, gotta count this, this is gonna be messy, but in here, don't bother counting it, I'm gonna draw it bigger on the other side. But within each of these townships, we have 36 equal one square mile sections all right so let me flip this over right here 
and I'm just going to draw a township. Okay, so again, six miles this way, six miles that way. And then within here, let's see if I can do this properly. Try to check my work. Do as I say, not as I do if I screw up the count. Did I do it? My golly, I think I did it. And again, the idea is it's all perfect and equal and you know these even one square mile sections within there so let's just say what we're looking at here oh i screwed that up okay so let's say uh it's this one let's just go ahead and use this one right here so our township and range value we still need to figure that out so from the baseline you can make sense of it with all this stuff but we've got our baseline right here we go one two three Let's do this over here. T3 South. And our range from the principal meridian, 1, 2, would be R2, E. So that's the township we're working with, right? So it's still, it's still here. This is what we're talking about. But to actually make it, you know, legible and so we can work with it, we're just blowing it up here. We're changing the scale. We're working at a different scale so we can see it. And of course, you know, in every other direction, we still have townships. We'd have T3 South, range one east over here. T3 South, uh, range three east that way, and, and so on, right? We're still in that grid. But within here, we've got these sections, and they're labeled in a specific way, okay? We always start with one, in the upper right or in the northeast. Okay, again, north is at the top of our map here. So in the northeast, one starts up there. And we go, we start trying not to screw up my lines, but we go this way, and then seven drops down here, and we start going this way. And then 13 drops down, and we go this way. And we keep doing this. So it snakes back and forth throughout here. And I don't know why we do this. All right. Thomas Jefferson knew. He was the kind of, he wouldn't have randomly done something. I'm sure there's some reason because this is how the Greeks would have done it. Something along those lines. But I haven't uh, taken the time to actually look this up. But you know, there's a reason. Because there was a reason for everything he did. All right, so 36 down there. Now, here's the deal. You want to commit this to memory, this little numbering scheme. And you want to do that because typically when we're working with this stuff, we don't have it labeled neatly like this, right? Either we're working at a scale on a map where we're pulled out enough where to, you know, label all of these things. It would be confusing. You couldn't read it, right? Well, we're working with maps that look more like this where you can see multiple townships, all right, or we're often working with maps where we're zoomed in, so you only see a few sections, right? And typically, what we see the way it always works is our map covers, say, this township, but also this township, maybe the one down here, and the one over here, right? So the map is like taking this area down here, and you want to be able to work with this, right? Because you would have as this continues, you know, this way, and we've got this one here, and we've got the sections continuing. This would be 36, right? That section there. This would be 25. That would be 24. We'd have this weird numbering thing because it would go 36, 31, 32, 33, all right? And so you want to know, because you are skilled geographers, you're going to look at that, and you're going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, I get what's going on because I know how Tom Jefferson numbered these sections, you follow? And then this also, you know, on any test I give you of this stuff, I'm never going to label uh, the numbers here. So you have to commit that to memory. And that worksheet I give you on Canvas does the same thing. There are no sections labeled. So the first thing I would do is just go in there, start with one in that northeast or that upper right, and just go through. Label them all so it's, it's easier 
for you. Okay, and then from here, each of these sections gets its own uh, address, right? Its own specific location here in the system. So all of these are Township 3 South, Range 2 East. But say this one specifically right here, all right, would be Section, we just do SEC, typically, 23, comma, Township 3 South, Range 2 East. All right, uh, if we can do another one. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's see this guy right there. All right, Section 8, Township 3 South, Range 2 East. Down here, Section 35, Township 3 South, Range 2 East. So it's pretty, pretty simple. Once you've figured all this, you know, township and range stuff out, but I do ask you questions about specific sections, right? All of these sections will have this same part of the answer. It's just the section number is going to change. And that's why it's also important to memorize how this goes, because if you start one over here, or if you forget, you do one through six here, but you start seven here and go to 12 there and so on. When I ask you certain questions about, you know, these interior sections here, you're going to get it wrong. I'm asking you about section 21, but it winds up being 22 for you because you numbered it incorrectly. All right. So the real trick for you, at least at this point, as you're working with it, is to remember how to properly label these sections. You follow? Okay, and of course, we don't even leave it here, because that's still one square mile. It's like 640 acres. That's massive. So what we then do, we don't have more sections. We do what's called aliquot subdivision, where we divide these sections into quarters, right? Four equal squares in there. And we describe that based on cardinal direction. So like this guy up here would be the northeast quarter, of section 21, of township 3 south, of range 2 east. But even that's kind of big. So what we'll also do is we'll further divide that, all right? And so we make quarters of the quarter. So like, let's say this guy would be the southwest quarter, right? Right there, of the northeast quarter, of section 21, of township 3 south, of range 2 east. And we go further, we can do more, and we can even do more, and it can continue going on. Oh, it's fantastic uh, when you start to get into things where it's the quarter of the quarter of the quarter of the quarter of the section and so on. It's absurd, but it's also brilliant and, and rational, and it works. Now, good news, physical geographers, uh, yeah, I'm not going to make you learn that much. Okay, and yeah, I force other people in other classes to do that stuff, but all we're going to worry about for now is this general township and range stuff. Well, it's looking even worse here. Um, but being able to be, you know, comfortable in figuring out stuff. So if I ask you about this one or this one or wherever, you can figure it out, right? But then I also want you to be comfortable if I expand one of these and show you the sections, you need to be able to number these things properly, remember, you know, how this whole uh, convention works, figure out the section itself, but also... Make sure you can get that Township 3 South range to East, which again, we just got by counting squares from the baseline and from the principal meridian. And that's all you gotta do. Simple, right? Everything's simple. Just make sure you go over this, practice this, use the resources I give you, and when it comes test day, you're gonna be fine. You dig? All right, happy mapping.